Yo, what's up, everyone? It's your boy Jack Oats to go. You either know or you don't. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. First and foremost, as always, appreciate the support. Um, it, let me start out with saying uh, I'm going to try my best to do um, a recording directly on my computer as opposed to my phone because it looks like we're having some issues with like uh, some playback. And uh, I, I looked into it. If you're viewing on your computer, some of my videos are only like five seconds long. Um, but if you view it on your phone, you can see it all the way through. Um, so I, I tried looking into it and apparently it's something about aspect ratios. Um, no clue how to fix that um, post production. So um, I'm just gonna try and do as much as I can uh, at my computer. Uh, which is fine, I guess. Uh, it just takes a little more time to import and export and all that stuff. So, uh, But you guys are worth it, in case you guys have been rocking with me for a while. So, why not? Uh, so today, we are going to be talking about the... What did you guys wrote on? The fall? Yeah, the fall of stars. Right. Right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I put out on Twitter, this is why you should follow me on Twitter, or at least find me on Twitter because I put out a poll and a few of you guys voted. Um, I only put 20, 30 minutes on the poll because uh, I wanted to get this video out um, and see what you guys wanted first because I'm going to be putting out two videos tonight. Um, this one is going to be having to do with uh, why Asta and Yuno could potentially die. And it's not the way we think of when we say die. So uh, uh, stick around for that. And then the next one, we'll be talking about the rise of man which is actually going to be the uh, a potential creation story for Asta, which I found was pretty interesting. So stick around for that when I drop it, which will be tonight. Um, and it should be pretty good. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. But anyway, this one, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about how Asta and Yuno could potentially die uh, in this arc, if not at some point in this series. Now, I know this is not a groundbreaking uh, statement saying that Asta will die. Um, so many, you know, YouTubers and guys on Twitter um, have been saying this for a while, especially since Julius said Asta will die. Um, and it's, I think it's just the, the means of them dying and what, what exactly does this do for the story and what does it do for them? Uh, and I think this right here is going to sum up uh, a bit of what might be happening. So, in this video, we're going to go over a stage in life that Crowley and the Order of the Silver Star strive to reach. But before we do, I'll need to go over a brief description of uh, the Order of the Silver Star, which is also called AA, um, not like AA meetings, uh, which I should probably go to. No, just kidding. Okay. So the AA, or, or the Order of the Silver Star, implies what is described as mystical and magical methods of spiritual attainment under the structure of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life and aims to research, practice, and teach scientific Illuminism. The Order of the Silver Star is often held to stand for Argentum Astrum, which is where we get AA from, which is Latin for Silver Star. So henceforth, we are going to start calling it the Order of the Silver Star. So, um, there, before we get into any of that, um, I'm sure we are familiar with the Order of the Silver Star by now. Um, so, the thing is, is that the Order of the Silver Star does not act alone. The Order of the Silver Star uh, has multiple uh, sects to it, and there are three of them. Uh, the first is the Order of of the Golden Dawn. This is called the Outer Order. Okay, uh, This is where you start. This is where the Magus starts. Uh, and they, they have to attain a certain level to reach the next order, the second order, which is the Inner Order, which is the Order of the Rosy Cross. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about that uh, and a few characters that fall into that that I mentioned on Twitter um, a, a couple days ago. And then we have the last and highest order, which is uh, the the order of the Silver Star, and these are your secret chiefs. Okay, so um, I think what I'm gonna do here is 
just kind of uh, lay out, starting from the from the bottom, okay? So remember in my previous video talking about the Order of the Golden Dawn and the Aeon of Horus, which I believe was Asta, um, the Crowley believes that instead of uh, power working its way down from Keter all the way to Malkut, uh, instead we start out at Malkut in the mode of Malkut and are destined to ascend all the way up to Keter and then this is where you get the becoming one with uh, God or your creator. Um, and you have to go through these orders, and there's certain steps to each one. I'm not going to go over all of them because not all of them matter that much. Um, but of course, where we start is actually below uh, Malkut, which is called the Nephilite, or the, the Neophyte, excuse me. Uh, this is just your beginner. They have to study their way into this and attain a certain amount of knowledge to actually live in the Malkut mode. So this suggests that not everyone even reaches the plane of just that physical existence uh, where they get to uh, receive information uh, and, and some sort of power from the other nine emanations of God. So not everyone reaches that level, which is kind of an interesting concept uh, to me. So uh, you start out there and the... Uh, the the highest point so it really depends on what you're looking at because some of these orders predate the next uh so we started out with the order of the golden dawn um i'm gonna pull up a picture you're gonna hear me typing because i want to uh i'm kind of i'm not just barely going over this but i need to reference and i thought i pulled up the picture and i did it um so the order of the golden dawn um they they have a different uh, a layout. It's not your typical Tree of Life layout, although it does encompass uh, some aspects of it. Um, and of course, I, I can can just cannot find it, which is whatever. Um, but yes, yeah, so you start out as the neophyte, and then you get into uh, Malkut mode, um, which is called Zelator, and that is exactly what it is. So on here, they have. Um, this is this picture that you're seeing right now is the all-encompassing um, of of all of the orders, right? And you'll see later that this incorporates different um, ideologies from the other orders, because uh, you do see um, it has Malkut, which is what we see on the uh, on the Tree of Life, and then you have the degrees. Now the degrees works both forward and backwards. Um, this is not just a one way. Um, as you can climb up a ladder, you can also climb down a ladder. Um, so you see the first degree uh, equal to the tenth degree. And then one number, the number on the left will start going up, and the number on the right will go down. This is the order of power. Uh, and then, of course, the name that they call it within the order comes after that. So you have Malkut, the degree, and then Zelator is just pretty much their word for Malkut. And then you have Earth, that's the element of it. So remember, I do reference what's uh, usually called Jacob's Ladder, where it is divided into uh, the four elements, Earth, Air, uh, Fire, and Water. And Earth is where creation comes to be. Uh, air, I believe, is the next one. Yeah, I keep forgetting the order, and I should just pull up the picture, but I'm too lazy. But you guys can look it up. It's just Jacob's Ladder. Um, and, and you'll see the order of creation, where I believe water is um, where it's, like, where everything starts. Just just look it up. Please just look it up. I have it somewhere on my Twitter, too. Um, but yeah, you'll see those have um, elements. Now, these elements are actually incorporated from some of the ideologies from the next order, which is the Order of the Rosy Cross. Uh, now, this order is... I, I found this one a little bit interesting. They have a couple different takes on, uh, on how they look at Ascension. And, and what, what am I doing with my life? I, I had these pictures up, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, so, one of the pictures just shows how let me get back good lord my life is a mess right now um i now i have to relook it up because i'm i didn't get my life together and 
I'm just dying here, you guys. All right, the order of the rosy cross. There we go. All right, so what you'll see uh, right off rip if you Google it like I just did, you'll see that it, there's a cross and it looks rather rosy, a lot of colors. Um, it's got your four cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, and then it has everything in between, northeast, uh, northwest, all that stuff, right? And then you see all these symbols inside. All those symbols inside definitely mean things, um, but it's all very convoluted. Uh, there is a simpler picture, which is the one I'm going to be showing you right now. Uh, and this one pretty much embodies where you see this is before the orders came together. Like I said, some of these orders predate the next and uh, at a time it coexisted and then came together. So as a separate order, um, I, I believe this was called uh, Rosie, Rosicrucianism, 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 something like that. Uh, you start out as a man at the very bottom and then at the very top you have what would be akin to Keter. They don't call it Keter though. Um, so you would start out essentially as you are in, in Malkut mode. And then you are connected to nature in various ways. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And those four things above that are connected. And that is something akin to what is known as Aether, which we have gone over on this channel where Aether in some philosophies is considered to be a combination of all of those elements because within all elements there is a singular element which is unattainable um, for these things to exist. Uh, just like I put out on Twitter, there's uh, Aether that exists throughout our entire cosmic universe um, where things, it has to be there because there needs to be a medium for things to be able to travel and exist. Uh, or else things just simply can't move and, and, and exist as is. So they call this force Aether. And again, it is unobtainable. Um, and this is also akin to quintessence um, in, in a few senses. So uh, this is what they, what they paint out in the, in the Order of the Rosy Cross, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, something to note about the Rosy Cross uh, if I can get to it here, is, uh, ba -ba -bum. uh, did you, this is the fourth postulate, okay, so they, they want to bring, uh, s like, education to, uh, mankind, so whereas we see, uh, we exist alongside earth, wind, fire, and water, uh, they they were seeking to uh, push the fact that we are one with them. We share power with them. So uh, not only are we separate, but we are connected and the same. Uh, it's it's more of a spiritual realization um, that they were pushing to have people start adjusting to. And it, it's just it's almost like I said in the last uh, in the last video, where they uh, it, it's they were pushing for self-realization, really. Uh, they wanted people to come to know not only themselves, but the world and the universe around them. Um, and and what's, what's really cool, there's there's so much that goes into the Rosie Cross that I'd love to put into this video, but it just become really confusing. Um, but they have a lot of aspects to them where they, they end up going to uh, alchemy and achieving a Philosopher's Stone. Uh, and that it's all again extremely interesting and like i've seen in other videos i would attribute philosopher's stones to um to uh the the magic stones in our series and if people are going around actually making these these could these people could be from this order of the rosy cross um and it's also a part of the series that we don't know anything about uh, as far as we know the magic stones just exist but no one's ever really questioned why they exist and who made them. Uh, so it, that that in and of itself is interesting and uh, could be another video, but I do want to go on. Uh, so we've gone over the Golden Dawn, the Order of the Golden Dawn, and then the Order of the Rosy Cross. And last but definitely not least, which would, is actually the point of this entire video, is the Order of the Silver Star. 
Um, so it just just to break it down, as you see in the picture, um, you have your lowest point, and then you have uh, three other points. I believe it's three other points, correct? It is one, two, three. Uh, you have three in a triangle, and then you have Keter up top. So you have five in all. So I believe the bottom one is Malkud. I can't really see the picture on here, but I believe it is Malkud. Still, and then the top is Keter. Now the left one is uh, attributed to Bina, and the right one is Chakna, and then the one in the middle is Dot, um, which is usually your pseudo um, triad, which is something I go over when talking about Xenon and Belial and all that stuff. Um, dot is essentially the gateway to um, the the heavens and also in the underworld. Um, so, at the highest mode, they what they call Keter is called the Ipsismus. Now, this is the highest mode of attainment within the Order of the Silver Star, and this mode, like I said, corresponds to Keter on the Sephiroth. Now, we again, we have to remember that Crowley. Uh, suggests that each person starts out in the Malkut mode, and they strive to ascend to the mode of Keter, and the same is said in the Order of the Silver Star. It's, again, just a different name. So, Ipsissimus means that the person has reached their most selfiest est estes, or his most selfness. So, you've come to know yourself in and out completely. Um, now, Crowley named a condition of this grade uh, in the trance of Naroda sem Semipati. Now, Neurotosamapati reduces the heartbeat and the other life functions to a bare minimum. So, Buddhist monks usually attain this state once they have reached a state of formlessness. So, that's kind of the point where we get to this, this pseudo-death. Now, I kind of want to go back to the symbols that we see on Asta's chest. We see the morning star symbol, and we also see this eight-pointed star. This is an octogram. Now, the octogram means new beginnings in a lot of different cultures. Uh, new beginnings, resurrection, divinity. Uh, it's, it means so many things um, that are akin to Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's, it's very telling that, you know, we, we reach this state of ipsismus, uh, and this is the state that you reach after you've reached the state of formlessness, which is essentially death of the physical body. Uh, and so uh, let me read you this part and then we'll kind of come back to that, okay? So Crowley urges the Magus seeking further progress to identify the Buddhist three characteristics of all existence with the opposite states. So uh, contrary to popular belief, ex uh, okay, I will say contrary to my uh, my my outside looking in belief before I educated myself here. Um, Buddhists uh, in this respect have a, have a more, um, have, a, have a bit of a darker look on the three characteristics of all existence than Crowley did, which is kind of ironic because Crowley is known for, you know, some darker things. But anyway, um, they, they, where, where in sorrow is joy. So where Buddhists practice sorrow, Crowley says, we need to practice joy. Where Buddhists say change, um, uh, where they need to practice change and instability, Crowley wants you to practice stability. Uh, and then uh, Buddhists practice selflessness, and Crowley wants you to focus on the self. So Crowley's version of Naroda includes seeing first the truth and then the falsity of the three characteristics according to his published theory. So um, to go back to this, now this is why I say Asta essentially dies, right? Um, in one of the most recent chapters, uh, the Dryad says that the human soul can only contain so much mana. And, Maybe not in those exact words, but that's essentially what she says, which is why they have to learn this ultimate magic via mana method, because the, the human soul just can't take in as much mana as, say, an elf can, who can just use ultimate magic right off rip. Um, so this, this tells us that there is an absolute limit for a human, right? We've seen definitely royals and nobles have a, a, just a ton of mana, but then at, there's a point where it stops. That's what the picture is. That's that's what the dryad is trying to paint for us. That's the picture she's trying to paint, is that there's an absolute limit for the human. 
Um, and I'm sure there's also one for the elves. However, it doesn't seem like it at, at the very moment because we haven't really seen like a totally wiped out elf complaining about like, oh my god, I'm low on mana. Uh. Um, so we have to assume that elves in the story, especially coming from Elvenheim, which is a higher realm in Norse mythology, is essentially that higher state of being, uh, which I also do go over. Um, so in this case, uh, let's get back to the octogram. Uh, I would attribute that more so to Jesus than the morning star. I would attribute that to Lucifer. Now, uh, as we know, Jesus ends up dying, right? And then being, becoming resurrected. Um, and then the morning star, what's interesting about this is that, yes, it is also applied to Jesus as well as Lucifer. Um, and you can use one for both. So just talking about Lucifer, uh, this was the original morning star. And as we know, Lucifer was an angel. He was the highest archangel. Um, and then he fell. Now, the reason people came up with this, this uh, lore is that when you look into the sky, the very first star that's in quotes, the very first star that you see is Venus. Of course, we know Venus is a planet. This is something they did not know at the time, of course. Um, so that's the first star you see. Now, when seasons start changing, the star stops coming up when dawn arrives. So they said that Lucifer fell. And that's why we get that Lucifer fell from heaven into the depths of hell because he was at his highest. And there's even like this whole ode to Lucifer saying like, oh, how you were once the highest and, and used to lay low nations. And now you have fallen and have essentially become nothing and despicable and all that stuff. Um, but then as the season changed again, the star comes back. And this is attributed to the new son, Jesus, uh, who has also been resurrected at this point in time. Uh, so this is where we get the, differ uh, the differential between the two. So here's what I'm proposing. I'm proposing that, yes, Asta is akin to Jesus in this series. Uh, and Liebe is akin to Lucifer in this series. The real Lucifer, I should say. And... I think what this is suggesting at the moment is that Asta will die. Um, and then Liebe will fall. Now, he's already fallen, but I think he'll fall as far as his character goes. Um, even though Asta brought him back, something might happen where we kind of get a turn in his character. And this is something I've suggested a while ago. I just never had Lore to back it up. Um, or this amount of lore backing it up. Um, but that's essentially what I'm suggesting. And then we also have uh, Yuno, who's essentially in this position where he's he's already royalty. He's a prince of the Spade Kingdom, so he's going to have, uh, as we've already seen since the beginning of the series, a very large uh, reserve of mana. Uh, and then mana just comes to him, uh, usually when he's fighting devils, um, and he becomes this absolute powerhouse. Um, and at the moment, it seems like he, at this stage, is at dot, um, soon to reach Keter. Uh, and if he does that, then he will have to die. Um, and, and it's not death, per se. It's becoming formless. Now, what is super, super interesting is that I've already said in my previous video that Yuno is attributed to the Aeon of Osiris, which means he's essentially the ruler of an era of time, a very long era of time. Um, and Osiris is killed by his jealous brother Set in uh, this is Egyptian lore. And Osiris dies, but then gets resurrected. Uh, and the same is said for, of course, Jesus and all that, right? So, I mean, it, I think it all kind of compiles and ends up making sense coming to um, a more solid story as you close in on, like, you take all the facts from one and then kind of keep coming in until you have, you know, uh, the same facts across all of these different lores. 
Uh, so it does suggest that they might reach a state of formlessness, which uh, would be perceived as death, but then become resurrected. How they would resurrect, um, I'm not sure. Uh, we do have characters like Roddy's in here, and we do have William, um, who have the potential to resurrect these souls. And who knows if Roddy's and Williams could, Williams, uh, William can actually uh, combo their magic and make something actually happen. And uh, I think that'd be actually really cool. But um, I do want to say, uh, when we talk about the Order of the Silver Star, uh, the, the point is to become the Silver Star, which is Keter, right? So the Silver Star is attributed to Sirius, the constellation. And Sirius is the dog star in, um, in Greek mythology. And this is... Uh, I, I think it's kind of cool because if you look at the constellation, you have right next to it Canis Major. Uh, and as I pointed out before on Twitter, and I think on here as well, um, we have the forms uh, of not Canis, Equus, uh, oh, I forgot Slotos's one. That, that is Equus. What am I missing? Um, Equ Equus, I already said. What did I just... And then Plumides is... I forgot Plumides. Whatever. But we have those forms, which are all names of uh, obsolete or fallen constellations. So instead of having Canis Minor, um, we would have now Canis Major, which is relevant still. Um, but Asa currently has Gimodelo at his side. Uh, and now looking at all of this, it seems like it's a lot more intentional and not just... Oh, he could have left Plumid with him. He could have left Slodos with him. He could have left uh, freaking, what's his name, War Gunner um, with him. I think uh, Gimodelo was a purposeful move by Tabata. Uh, and maybe maybe Nox, I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't seem like Nox would know. Like, oh yeah, uh, this is guy is definitely attributed to Sirius. Um, but yeah. But then, uh, to go back, <laughs> Sirius is the brightest has the brightest star within it, right? So uh, we go back to the training with Nox, and we see that he emits this extremely bright light. Uh, and again, this could be attributed to Asa being the silver star, uh, and this fits both literally and figuratively, that he's reaching that point of Um which is all very, very cool. But this does suggest that Austin, you know, do have limited time here. Uh, as far as Noel, it could go that way for her. I don't see it. Um, it there's, there's, there's a bit more fleshing out for Noel that needs to happen before I can make any of those assumptions. But... Um, I, I do attribute not well to some other things that might come up in uh, future videos, but I think I'll leave it here. This is just something to think about. Um, oh, well, before I leave it there, I want you guys to know this. Um, I, I did say this in the video talking about Julius and Donatio being a part of the Order of the Golden Dawn, which is actually, I would like to correct myself, they would be a part of the Order of the uh, Silver Star at this point, uh, since they're that high up. Um, or, no, no, no. They're Gavura and uh, Chesed. So they're actually part of the Rosy Cross. They should be. Okay, yeah. Um, and I mentioned that Keter is unknown to them. So if you go, if we go back to this picture that I'm pulling up right now, uh, at the very top you have the three uh, secret chiefs. So once these states are uh, reached, these no one really knows who's reached this state except for of course those three um and that's going to be one of those things where i think it's going to be a turn of our our characters that we know about uh so if we're talking about austin you know um where austin might be aloof and kind of like this goofy kid uh he could secretly turn character uh kind of like aaron ended up doing in attack on titan i know we don't want to hear the word attack on titan because they kind of fumbled the ending i don't i haven't read it in a while so i don't know i don't feel any other way about it but 
Um, I do know that Aaron does take a turn in character and becomes like this most like the craziest MC for a bit, uh, and had been plotting for a while. So uh, something similar could happen with Asta and or you know, uh, where they've reached this state. But of course, um, within this order, you cannot uh, you cannot tell people that you've reached this state. Uh, so it's it's very doubtful that even Julius or Donatio even know about who this is, but they would be taking orders from these people. Uh, so how they would relay those orders, be it through mysticism, like a burning bush, um, who knows, or just visions, maybe. Uh, you know, it, it, it all really depends, and this is where Tabata has all the room to write. Um, but I... If I were to take a guess, it would look something like how the Dryad communicated with Patri. Um, and, it, I mean, it's almost exactly that way, um, where Patri is at Mount Coop. However, on their Sephiroth, the power trickles down, and where Keter is the strongest, Mount Coop is also the strongest as well, and everything in between is, like, you know, strong, but they all connect at Mount Coop and Keter, so those would naturally be some of the stronger emanations there. Um, so it makes sense why the Dryad sent him a divination to go save Noel and crew and take them to um, Alicia and, you know, all that stuff. So um, I, I think it would look something like that. Uh, hopefully this video made sense. I, I, I do want to stop there this time. Um, there, there's a lot of this that, uh, that can make things confusing. Um, but I do, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything for you guys, you know. Um, oh, I have this other picture here. I'm going to show it right now. Okay. So this is actually when the Order of the Rosy Cross and the Order of the Golden Dawn uh, come together. And this is pretty much their rendition of what their Tree of Life looks like and what it encompasses. Now, this is much less of a tree than it is just orders of things. And of course, you have the spheres that would emanate the inner world to the outer world. Um, now, up top, you have the creator, right? And is obviously creating and also spurting out milk out of the nipples, which is, you know, it's just how the human body works. Stop being immature, all right? So, again, you have the head, which is all-knowing. This is the creator. This is the creator creating. Uh, you obviously have a baby in the womb. Now this baby's connected to uh, what is here called fiat natura, which is um, the, the the making of nature, what makes nature. Um, and then those are connected to, or the fiat natura is connected to uh, air, fire, water, and earth. And this is aether which is again akin to quintessence now look at where these go immediately they immediately go to the middle which is as you can see chaos and chaos is in the very center of all these things worldly and then branched out from them from chaos directly are things like death um you have the uh the green leo which is actually pretty cool, is I I would like to see Leo develop a different fire, and if it's green, we can definitely attribute this to him being a part of this uh, this connection of the Golden Dawn, Rosy Cross, and the Silver Star, uh, and would finally give Leo a, a legit place and uh, and what of what he's supposed to do in his role in this. But then you have um, going back to the Rosy Cross. Okay, so. We've all seen this connection with Charlotte and Luck with the elves, the actual elves of themselves were uh, siblings. Where Charlotte and Luck are most likely not siblings, they are probably still related in the sense that they belong to this order. Um, and either they know it or they don't. <laughs> Jack Oates to go. No, okay. Um, it, and it really doesn't matter. So Luck clearly doesn't know that. Charlotte could. Um, and the reason I say Charlotte could is because she took that modern method and purified it. This means she has the deeper understanding of how this works. Um, 
and and she didn't just make it her own she really uh took it to the level it was supposed to be at so she's flexing her knowledge which again to go back to the beginning of this video where i talk about what their purpose was was to illuminate uh you know and educate the people on how to use nature and um and how that nature is connected to the human as they are also one so she kind of pretty much embodied that in her studies of modern method now we have luck and the reason i bring up luck is because we do take a look at his grimoire and it's not just lightning on there there are two roses with uh berries around it and some leaves and this is uh i i believe it's supposed to be akin to oak trees which is also the tree of life um but with the roses of course i would assume this was related to the order of the rosy cross um and he could have something to do with that which is uh why he seems to be able to attain this uh this form specific to him um i, I don't think this is something gaja would be able to do if even if he was taught ultimate magic uh his uh, lux form seems very intentional and uh and we're of course going to see why um pretty soon from now um but those were some things i did want to bring up um and we do have uh you know on the very right uh this is on, on actually on the right and the left it's it's pretty much something about death but the one on the right is more dark and maybe this has something to do with yami as well i'm not too sure uh I, my latin's not very good uh, so, I, I mean, I can only do so much here. Um, I, but yeah, I promise this time, I'm going to stop right there uh, before this gets too confusing. But in short, um, I do think Yino and Asta will reach a state of formlessness, which again will be, uh, it, it'll look like a death. And they're both going to be resurrected, and they might reach a higher state. Of, of being and whether that means Asta comes back with magic I don't know um, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see and I, I have to look a little bit deeper into this because uh, there's um there, there's some interesting uh, some yeah there's some interesting stuff here but stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to talk about Asta's creation and uh, a little bit about you know as well um, there's some interesting things that I found that could explain why we see Asa with potentially no life force, um, and why we see Yuno know, with all kinds of, of just buffs as far as mana goes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to end it here. If you guys uh, like this video, damn, 40 minutes, sorry, but sorry it's a lot of content you guys but uh hopefully it was interesting hopefully you liked it let me know in the comment section below what you think about this let me know on twitter um yeah uh if you guys made it this far i don't know uh let me know what your favorite fight in black clover was yeah if you made it this far i'm gonna I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk for like maybe two minutes just so people don't skip to the end and go like, yeah, yeah, I watched the whole thing. So, yeah, we we'll talk for two minutes. So, if you guys aren't reading Sakamoto Days, you should read Sakamoto Days because Sakamoto Days is pretty freaking goaded. Uh, this chapter that came out on Sunday, super dope. They started out the color page, which is super freaking cool. Um really good shot of all of the characters that we have so far um they're going up against the sniper guy and that dude i i kind of liked him his um his his backstory was kind of like main character-ish where like no one believed in him he was the only thing he could do was snipe he couldn't wield a knife he couldn't fight couldn't do anything but he was really good at using a sniper rifle and then he developed it to where he could ricochet his bullets and it actually made him a threat, and he was still being disrespected within the uh, assassination organization, uh, or the Dodent guy. And uh, he really put Sakamoto on the, I wouldn't say the edge 
um, and Sakamoto kind of like figured him out pretty quick with Shin, but it was, I don't see a lot of people making it out of that. I mean, ricocheting bullets up to three times, successive shots as well, so you're not worrying about one bullet ricocheting three times, you're worrying about multiple bullets ricocheting three times in different directions, and it's a lot to have to deal with, and not only is the sniper already hard to track, but, I mean, he's using his pet bird with a camera f for extra line of sight so he'll always know where they are so he doesn't ever have to be in direct line of sight of his target he could be like if you're looking straight he could be off to the right or like even like like almost towards where you are but off to the right shoot upward then the bullet ricochet and come straight at you or you know find other uh, two other places to ricochet off of I mean, that's so wild to think about. But then the way Shin got to him was super expert, because as we know, like, Shin is able to read minds and emotions, right? So what he did was yell into the microphone that they were all attached to, because they were all on a team for this airsoft competition before they got found out. And Shin is like the... Even though he's out of range, if he can get this guy to panic he can pick up on that thought wave because the the wave the thought wave of a panicked mind uh, travels a lot farther than one of a calm mind. Which is super smart because then he's like, yo, he's over there. So Sakamoto picks up a rock and yeets it all the way to where he is into the barrel of his gun and totally shatters it. Like, who? Uh, how do you do that? Like, Sakamoto's way different. But, I mean, just the way they handled that situation was super dope. But, uh, but yeah, that's my soccer motor review at the end of this. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Jack Goes to Go. You either know or you don't. God damn, it's almost an hour of talking, but it was kind of worth it, okay? Kind of worth it. All right, here we go.